Okay, so in this next video, we're going to look at the new features of VectorWiz 2021 in regards to some of the BIM features and particularly uh, pocket and sliding doors. Now in VectorWiz, we've always been able to do pocket and sliding door configurations um, and that's been fine if they're relatively simple. But if you're trying to do sort of large door openings like these multi-glide doors here from Anderson, then um, configurations beyond four panels weren't possible. And you had to fudge this a little bit. Now we can essentially um, go through and do pretty much unlimited sets of sliding and bifolding doors. So this is what I want to focus on in this particular video and just explore some of these new features with you. Um, as well as Anderson, if you're in the UK, um, you're going to want to look, take a look at um, a company called Fineline. These are really popular with um, lots of top range architects. Um, basically, these are really, really high quality with very fine sort of frames and jams and mullions and that kind of thing. Um, you can see there's some beautiful projects in their brochure. And in fact, quite a few of these practices actually use Vectorworks um, and one or two of them are actually my clients. So just want to show you this one. This is Marshall and Kendon in Bristol. It's a practice I've worked with for a number of years. Beautiful project. And these big doors here um, all slide open in the summer. Um, so on a lovely day, this sort of lovely swimming pool here can be accessed and sort of enjoyed from the building. So that's the idea behind this video. Let's get into this back into Vectorworks. Okay, so as we go through this new features of Vectorworks 2021 video, I'm going to try and use um, as many of my kind of new feature keyboard shortcuts as we can. So I'm using my lovely um, smart object display or on-demand tools as I like to call them. And I'm going to pre-select my wall tool. This was one of the last tools I've used. I've got my door here as well, you can see. So let's click on my door and I'm just going to go to um, my resource manager. So I'm going to do command R just to pop open the resource manager. Just because I want to show you, um, I've got a really great set of walls that I've created and basically these are available on my website. So if you're interested, take a look at these. There's a really nice set of wall different types of wall configurations and these are all fully textured up as well. That's the other nice thing. So I'm going to go for this one. Let's bring this um, into the model. Actually, I think it's already in the model. So let's just carry on. There it is. Yeah. So let's just double click to activate that one. And we're just going to draw a nice sort of simple wall, 10 meters long. Okay. Let's make it a bit longer actually, 15 meters. That's fine. So once I pop into 3D, we should see if I've already got a layer height in there. Let's try and use my shortcuts. Let's do it this way. Very good. Um, you can see I've got a really nice little kind of wall here with some timber cladding on. Okay, so we're not interested so much in the wall. We're much more interested in what we can do with the new doors. So I'm going to go and access a, a normal door here. And let's just pop that into the wall to begin with. Um, I would always advise you to go up into the settings. And there's a couple of things like um, the shim gap that I would always encourage you to sort out before you ever use your first door. Um, so go to the jam section, just eliminate the shim gap, and maybe show that in plan. We tend not to draw this at planning stage in the UK. Um, it's there if you want it for more detail later. But let's just go ahead and just pop our first door into the drawing. And we'll have one here. And I think we'll just have one over this side as well. That's fine. We can do all the usual things and sort of flip the door configuration. But what I'm interested in here is to pop straight back into the settings dialog and show you some of the really new cool configurations. Um, so first of all, let's make this door wide enough. Let's go and make this, um, say, three meters wide. And then down here, <coughs> we can change this to, um, I think we'll start off with sliding doors. Let's go to sliding. And we've got a double configuration here. Now, when we click onto operation, you've got all the different types of configuration. So X is actually uh, an opening panel and zero or O indicates it's a locked panel. And you can see that clearly on the preview down here, a fixed panel and a sliding open panel. Um, if I go for two opening panels, let's try that. I don't think that was something that was feasible before. Um, so let's kind of see, we've got a nice little preview here in plan. And what you can see is in 2D and 3D, there's the doors. Okay, so just let's double click into the doors and make them a bit more interesting. Normally these would be glazed. Um, so we just pop that to leaf, go to the glaze section, and we've got our nice glazed doors there. Let's just pop back out again. And while we're here, let's just um, give that frame a nicer sort of dark color, just so it looks a bit more interesting against the black. Fantastic. So 
We've got our double opening panels now. If we scroll down onto the object info and we go to the 3D visualization section, you can see that we actually do have an option to th show 3D open. So if I click onto that one, you can show we, we can actually show the doors 3D open 90 degrees or 45 degrees, so semi open. Okay, so let's carry on and have a look at some of the other configurations. If I go for um, closed, open, so closed, closed, and then open in the middle. Again, if I open that 90 degrees, you'll see it will kind of open up. So these things are, are pretty nice. Um, and these are probably things that we could do, you know, before. Apart from some of the things like the triple X, where we've got all of these panels sliding open. Um, so that wasn't feasible before. Okay, and where it really starts to get interesting is once you go down to the settings and you go to multiply. In fact, probably easier if I just go into the big settings dialog to show you how this works. So let's just double click into that. So we will go for configuration. Um, there's some settings in here I want to come back to in a minute. But under general, I'm just going to pop down to multiple. Okay, and with multiple, what's interesting is rather than three, we can now go beyond four leaves. We can have um, five leaves, six, seven, eight, or whatever we need to create these different types of doors. So that's cool. Let's make the structural width a bit bigger, say four meters wide. So if I pop it into 3D, you can see we've got a lovely um, sliding four panel door. Um, they're all sliding one way, sorry, five panel, all sliding one way. Let's show them open by turning off show 3D open. Let's show them closed. Um, and if I do want to, I can actually show them open, say 45 degrees, which is kind of nice as well. Just visually, it's a nice thing to show your client, I think. Now, if I go, want to um, have them split an opening in both directions, all I need to do then, just pop down to uh, multiple by part. And, but basically what it does better to it's kind of, you know, reasonable. It will divide um, five by th half, essentially. So you get three, three panels one side, Two panels to the other side now you can always flip the configuration if you would like if you rather have the three on that side so that really isn't an issue um you can see let's copy this setting to this door here i'm going to do this with the eyedropper tool so if i double click my shortcut e or the eyedropper tool one of the things you will need to turn on is the plugin parameters if you want to pick up the settings from the door so basically let's click all of those click ok and I'm just going to pick up that setting and drop it onto this door here. It's a really nice, easy way to match. And basically, I just really wanted to change this to, say, six panels. Let's go for seven, actually. Let's go for straight for seven. Um, and OK, let's go for eight. See what happens. So the good thing with eight is, obviously, it's nice and even. And let's make that eight metres wide. Probably going to need to move that into the wall a little bit more, I should think. And let's have a look at that. Wow, look at that. That's so cool. So. Um, really, really nice improvement. Lots more flexibility and really love the way. Um, I've always enjoyed the way you can show these. This isn't you, but show them open or closed. That's pretty cool. Um, and basically, there's a couple of nice extra settings in here. You'll see that the jam width um, is determined by the width required for the doors. So what happens is, as you get more doors, uh, this width potentially needs to be larger to take account of the sliders. Um, so that will be a setting that can automatically be turned on. Now you can still set it manually if you want to kind of override that in the jam. You see um, I can use wall depth. So instead of it being sort of set by auto expanded depth for the door configuration, now it will kind of be full width here. Um, come across as I would probably like it to be for that kind of cladding situation. So very, very nice. Okay, so let's carry on with taking a look at some of the um, other sliding door and pocket door configurations. You can see I prepared a little file here with um, a few more options here. Um, this one is, I think, let's just double check. That looks like it's a three panel. Uh, this one here, you can see, I think it's a five. Yep, five panel. And here I was looking at um, how you could go beyond that. Let's change that to say seven panels. So it's really, really fast and really elegant. Um, obviously, we can change the opening size to correspond as well. Let's take a quick look in 3D just to finish off these sliding doors and then we'll look at the pocket doors. But what do you think? I am really impressed by the new um, sort of configuration options here. And, you know, you can have really nice big panels or more sort of shorter ones and so on as well. Okay, so let's take a, a little look at some of the things like the pocket doors. 
So if we go to the pocket door configuration, what you're going to see here is um, the big improvements are the fact that now, instead of just having um, single and bi part, which were the previous two options, um, you already only had those two. Now we can have multiple. So with multiple, again, you can set the number of panels that you would like or leaves rather. So four leaves. And what it's really quite nice is it will actually create a pocket opening in the wall um, so that you can actually kind of see that the doors go into that space. And that's actually something that shows not just in 2D, um, if I kind of just for a second, let me just take away this floor. I'll just cut that out for a second. This bit here, you can see we've got the pocket hole uh, where you can actually kind of slide through. So we'll go back to top plan. Let's just paste back in our base again. Okay, so let's take a bit look at the um, in depth more of the pocket doors here. Now you can see there's a really interesting new feature here. Um, basically, if we're going to the settings, you'll see that there's a nice option in the pocket door configuration. Um, basically, let's go to pocket door configuration. And what you can do is you can use pocket door expose recess. So if I just turn this off for a second, um, you'll see that the door, the pocket door is just a normal pocket door. Um, and obviously that just slides into the wall as you would expect. But more and more, sometimes this is a scenario that you might come up against, um, particularly if the wall isn't deep enough. Um, you might come up against the fact that you want to have it in a recess itself. What's quite nice is you can actually have a class um, that you can set the uh, graphics and the, the materials of that recess to. So it's a really, really nice little feature there. So I've just put some timber cladding as a material there. So again, the doors, if I just show them open, I always really, really like doing this for clients um, live when I'm demonstrating, just to show how you know the doors actually react. And they, they often react quite well to that. Let's go for so 100 degrees, that should be fully open. So you get the idea, those doors fully open and we've got those sort of panels behind them. But you know, the ability to actually sort of just quickly go, let's say uh, to a multi-part by part here, and then we'll have the option to say, let's say, I don't know, say five panels. Probably make a bigger opening now. Let's make that say four meters. And let's show the doors closed again. So you can see, really, really nice. The pocket size is the same because they all slide back into that. Um, and again, you can sort of show different open configurations. One other thing you might have noticed is I've actually got the uh, little opening direction angles here in 3D. Um, if you do know how to do that, that's not a new feature, but it's been around for a while. So all you do, just pop into your settings and go to 3D visualization. And not only can you show it on the inside, but you can show it on the outside as well, inside and outside. And what's nice is you can put those um, hinges in a class. So it's one of those things that you can easily just, you know, keep on to remind you which way the door's opening. Uh, just pop into your classes. Let's just pop in there and go down to, for example, my hinge marker class and just turn those off as required. So that's a really, really nice little feature. Fantastic. So let's just pop out. Um, just want to uh, pop into dark mode for a while because it looks kind of cool and just have a little spin around and see how this is looking. Um, one of the other sort of final features I really wanted to show you was you know, there really is no limit to the kind of configuration that you can have here. Um, I'm going to go for something pretty massive, go for nine panels. Um, and it, you know, I haven't tried much more than that because I think, you know, physically, I'm not sure how many more you can actually draw. I've got like 12 panels. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the limit will be what you can actually buy from the manufacturer. I think as far as I've seen in the UK, eight or nine is the, the biggest amount. And obviously you can have a pretty large structure opening as well. Let's go for a nine meter opening there and just see how that works. Fantastic. So what do you think about the new features for pocket and sliding doors? I'm really impressed by the way they're working and I'm looking forward to seeing how um, I can kind of incorporate these for use in my future projects, particularly as clients get more demanding of big openings and sort of dividing um, partitions in internally as well as externally. So I think there are some really, really nice improvements there. So great new feature and looking forward to seeing how we can implement that in our workflows.